What on earth are you doing out in the rain in the middle of the night? You should be looking after yourself with such a big day ahead of you. Are pigs for eating? Who told you that? Are pigs for eating? This is truly one of the most horrifying utterances in film history. Are pigs for eating? Imagine yourself as a child, forced to contemplate that your purpose in life, the reason you were born, is to have your throat slit, your body cut to pieces, and ultimately consumed. And then you realize that it was only by a random stroke of luck that you were spared. Babe is such an innocent little creature. He never believes that he is anything less than a person, and never doubts his natural rights. He never loses his own sense of self-worth. It's one of his core principles. When he is first brought to the farm, Fly, the sheepdog, tells her pups, Not as stupid as sheep, mind you, but pigs are definitely stupid. Babe immediately stands up to her, challenging her. Excuse me. No, we're not. Fly is not a bad person, of course. Her anti-pig bigotry... Pigotry, if you will, is the result of social indoctrination. It's what she was taught, and it's what she's teaching her pups. This is not to absolve Fly, of course, no more than I would try to absolve the everyday racism in America. Later, when Babe is getting his first lesson in sheep herding, Fly advises him to stop being so nice to the sheep. But you're treating them like equals. They're sheep. They're inferior. Oh, no, they're not. Of course they are. We are their masters, babe. Writer George Miller says that the things she is saying sound like... Like a speech out of Nazi Germany there for a moment. Fly is such a nice person. She has become like a mother to babe. So it's shocking to hear her say such vicious, vile things. But pretty soon, she's going to express her prejudice against sheep. Because that's the way she's been brought up. Fly is the perfect example of how otherwise nice, fine people can harbor such deep hatred for others and perpetuate a system of oppression without even being conscious of it. Of course, some people are conscious of it. Rex, another sheepdog, is at the top of the food chain at Hoggett Farm, just under Farmer Hoggett and his wife, of course. He understands his position of power and sees any disruption of the status quo as a threat. After Babe gets caught in the house with Ferdinand the duck, Rex quickly asserts his power over Babe. Telling him, From now on, we'll all respect the rules. To each creature its own destiny, and every animal in its proper place. Despite Rex's nominal dominance over the farm, he is not, in fact, the ultimate authority. That mantle is held by the bosses, Farmer Hoggett and his wife, Esme Hoggett. And when Farmer Hoggett decides that he wants to start training Babe to be a sheep pig, there isn't much Rex can do about it. Babe's unwitting tactic of pure-hearted earnestness in the face of oppression brings to mind the soft, non-violent, moderate, liberal form of protest that we are taught is the correct way to reform society, ignoring how ineffective that is against the clear anti-animal fascism that exists in the world of Babe. It's nice that the pig and the farmer learn to love and respect each other. It warms my heart, it truly does. But let's not forget that Babe's entire family was slaughtered and consumed by men not too different from Farmer Hoggett. And it was only by a highly specific series of unlikely events that Babe didn't end up just like them. Babe and Ferdinand make for an interesting parallel, and it speaks to the film's anti-radical politics. Much like Babe behaving like a sheepdog to escape his destiny of ending up spit-roasted and served for Christmas dinner, Pork is a nice, sweet meat. (laughs) Ferdinand attempts to escape his fate by becoming a rooster. Roosters have a use, you see, and if Ferdinand has a use, he thinks he won't end up like Rosanna. The film treats Ferdinand as a fool for reasons I don't really understand. Unlike Babe, he is fully aware of the horror of what life has in store for his kind. Humans eat ducks! This is life and death! And he is willing to do everything in his power to live. I respect his tenacity. Ferdinand challenges the status quo through direct action, unlike Babe, who also tries to change things, but indirectly by working through the system. Babe proves to be very much not a radical, and he doesn't have to be. But frankly, I find his attitude to be a little too optimistic, and unjust society rarely allows for significant change. Babe wasn't a very important film in my childhood. In fact, I had forgotten almost the entire plot before I rewatched it as an adult. I'm a vegetarian, though I didn't become one until well into my 20s. Watching Babe as a child, I'm not sure the idea of becoming a vegetarian even crossed my mind. The film isn't about vegetarianism per se, but it's hard to imagine watching Babe and not at least flirting with the idea of becoming a vegetarian. 
Why didn't I, or the millions of other people who watched the film when it first came out, immediately become vegetarians? Well, that's a big question. But I think part of the problem is one of cognitive dissonance. We may understand that pork is pig, but we don't emotionally connect the food to the animal. Bacon is not something that comes from a pig, it's something that comes from the store. For most people shopping at a supermarket, it's the moral equivalent of buying a loaf of bread. Come breakfast the next morning, the thought that they are consuming what was once a living, breathing, feeling, intelligent animal doesn't even cross their minds. I said before that the film isn't really about vegetarianism, and George Miller didn't consider that a primary theme, but really, I mean, come on. The film is about vegetarianism. How could it not be? Scene after scene shows a cute little pig unaware that people want to eat him. The film could have been titled, Does a Pig Deserve Life? There's an excellent scene in the film where Duchess the Cat tells Babe what it means to be a pig. The fact is that pigs don't have a purpose. So why do the bosses keep a pig? To eat them. And she so perfectly nails the human attitude towards certain animals. Even now, as a vegetarian, it's difficult to look at a pig and imagine it outside of a farm or a slaughterhouse. It's hard to imagine pigs just wandering free in their natural habitat. Even now, when I haven't eaten a pig in so many years, I still see pigs as something intended for human consumption. Subconsciously, I still think they're meant for eating. Somehow, the thought of eating a pig anymore is a terrible thing to me. They're extraordinary animals. They are as intelligent as dogs, easily. Even though they've been bred, human can't have bred them for their meat. They haven't bred out their intelligence or their sensitivity. George Miller doesn't tell people to be vegetarians, but... But remember as you're eating it, have a degree of reverence for what you're doing and understand what you're doing. I suppose that applies to anything that you do. Pigs aren't humans. And that's why we can watch a movie like Babe and not be driven into a dark depression. The audience is allowed to think, sure, it would be sad to eat this cute little pig if he could talk and do tricks and be a sweet little boy. But real pigs aren't like that. And no, they aren't. Not exactly. But... Time to enter the shame box. Listen up, meat eaters. You know it's fucked up. I don't need to tell you how smart pigs are, that they have the capacity to feel emotion and pain and suffering. You guys have dogs and cats. You know they have personality. You'd never do the things you do to pigs to your beloved pets. Eat meat. I'm not telling you what to do. But don't lie to yourself about it. All right, out of the shame box. This film can only exist with the cognitive dissonance we create around animals. We understand they are smart, emotional creatures that have rights and deserve respect, but then we turn around and torture and kill them anyway. I'm sorry, we're out of the shame box. James Cromwell was already a vegetarian before he took the role of Farmer Hoggett in the film, and it said his experience working on Babe turned him into a vegan. Writer George Miller was also a vegetarian when the film was released, though he says he was not trying to write a vegetarian film. I assume then that George Miller sees the ending of the film as rather optimistic. And, of course, it is. Babe has a happy ending. But I just can't stop myself from thinking of all the animals that didn't get the opportunities that Babe got. And not just the pigs. The millions, if not billions, of humans in the world who are destined to live hard lives of pointless drudgery and struggle, and to die with little to no ceremony. Their lives, like their flesh, decomposed, meaningless, and destined to be forgotten. We watch films like Babe and think of ourselves as the cute little sheep herding pig, but we aren't Babe, not most of us. We're his litter mates, destined for slaughter. But maybe Babe doesn't represent the singular lucky individual who was able to make it in an unjust society. Maybe he represents all of us, doing what we can to make things change. As George Miller says, so it is a story about an unprejudiced heart, but also about courage, the ability to sort of rise above and actually go forward despite all the things kind of dragging you back into, into despair, basically. Babe achieved a sort of revolution in Hoggett Farm because he was unwilling to submit to an unjust society. And once he gained the privileges of a sheepdog, the privileges of those higher in power, he did what he could to put that privilege to work. And as much as I wish Babe was more radical, in truth, he was just doing the best he could to do what was right. If only we could do the same.